guys, welcome back to another video on Planeswalker Network. So for this week, um, I figured I would do a quick deck update on my Arkham Dags and Commander deck. Um, and so I will leave the current deck list I have down in the description. Here's just a rough version of it that I have out on paper. Um, so uh, I don't have Arkham Dags in. Uh, which is a little bit awkward because he's the commander, but he's three and a blue for a two-two human artificer. Tap target artifact creature's controller sacrifices it. If um, he or she does, that player searches their library for a non-creature artifact and puts it into play. So Arkham Dyson is a pretty competitive commander, um, and it'll typically put a bullseye on your head. And players will usually target you unless you're playing a solely competitive commander game. Um, but I'm playing him just because I wanted to have a both a competitive and a casual commander deck. And so I'm also in the process of building a Duretti uh, Scrap Savant commander deck. Um, and because both decks are artifact based, they can swap a lot of staples. Um, so I uh, figured I could interchange between the two decks, depending on if I wanted to play competitively or casually. But anyway, so I'll get right into my deck. So first off, I have Nervinal's Disc. It is... Artifact that enters the battlefield tapped, it costs four colorless, and one and tap it, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So it's just a nice board wipe to have that can uh, clear the board of most problematic permanents outside of planeswalkers. Um, and so it's just overall a nice thing to have, um, and it's sort of a kill switch that can reset the game. Um, and also, it um, works well with Mycos and Vladis, which is a permanent that makes everything, or is an artifact that makes everything else artifacts, and lets players spend mana as doors man of any color to cast of spells. So, and also makes everything colorless. So, Measure's Factory is a land that taps at a colorless mana pool. Pay one, uh, it becomes a 2-2 assembly worker artifact creature until end of turn. It's still a land. Tap, target assembly worker creature gets plus minus one until end of turn. So, this land is in here because you can make it into an artifact creature, and then sack it to Arkham Dagson. And the nice thing is that because it's paying one, you don't have to pay one and tap it, obviously, because if you want to make it a creature, what would be the point of tapping it? So you can tap it um, to have it activate itself, and so you can just tap it, and then it turns into an artifact creature, so you don't have to use any other mana to uh, turn it into a creature. And then I have Buried Ruin, which is a land that taps out colors to mana pool, and pay two, tap it, and sack it, return target artifact card from your average hand. So this is just some nice artifact recursion on a land, um, which makes it more difficult to get rid of. Um, and so it um, can just get back uh, artifacts that you typically don't want to have in the graveyard. Inventor's Fair is a legendary land. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. The life gain is usually not important, um, but you know sometimes it does come into play gaining a little bit of life. And then taps, add a colorless to your pool, and pay four, tap, sack it. Search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. So it's not going to be uncommon that you control three or more artifacts, given that this is an artifact-based deck. Um, and the fact that it's a tutor on a land is pretty nice. Um, and this is one of the deck's eight artifact tutors, not counting its commander. Then I have Dark Steel Citadel, which is just a land. Uh, it's an artifact land. It's indestructible. Uh, tap, add a colorless to your pool. Then I have Temple of the False God. Tap add two colorless to your mana pool, activate its ability only if you control five more lands. So this is just a nice ramp on a land um, that just allows you to get out uh, your stuff faster. Then for some of the mana ramp that I have so far, I have Soul Ring, which is one colorless, tap add two colorless to your mana pool as an artifact. I have Lotus Petal, which is zero mana, tap, sack it, add one of the color to mana pool, play this ability as a mana source. Basically just meaning that you can do it whenever. Um, so this again allows you to get out a lot of uh, explosive plays in turn 1 or turn 2. Then I have Mana Crypt, which I still haven't taken the price sticker off of, I don't know why. It's uh, 0 mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, Mana Crypt deals 3 damage to you. Tap add 2 colors to your pool. So it's a free soul ring that occasionally bolts you. Um, and again, this allows you to get out turn 1 or turn 2 Arkham Dagsons. Um, and that can just be a, a big threat early on. So then I have my tutor package. Um, and so... Um, that's War of Invention, which is Court of Calling for Artifacts. It's blue, 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 and X has Improvise. It's an instant. Your artifacts can help cast you this, uh, cast the spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one colorless. So basically you can tap any non-mana producing artifacts and, uh, you have to, it adds an additional one, uh, 
to the X. Switch your library for an artifact card with convert mana cost X or less, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So this is the, the most important thing about all the tutors in this deck is their unconditional artifact tutors. They find any artifact. It doesn't have to be a non a non creature artifact. Because Arkham Dax's ability is held back by the fact that you have to search up a non creature artifact. So certain combos like um Metalwork or Staff of Domination um, are harder to find because you can't grab Metalworker with Arkham Dex, and obviously because Metalworker is a creature. Um, and these uh, tutors can all grab the, those creatures. So then I have Trophy Mage, which is 2 and a blue for a 2 2, Human Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, you may search the library for an artifact card with three Roman Mana Cost 3, reveal it, and put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. So this grabs, obviously, Metalworker and also Staff of Domination, but it grabs things like Basalt Monolith when you need to grab them. Um, and some other notable combo pieces, and things like Junk Diver, um, if you ever need to have an artifact creature you can sack to Arkham. Then I have Trinket Mage, which is the exact same power toughness, exact same mana cost, exact same creature and creature type, but instead of searching for converted mana cost 3, it searches for converted, converted, bleh, converted mana cost 1 or less. So this finds you things like Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, um, Soaring, just any of your ramp pieces, um, and it also searches for things that have converted a mana cost of X. For instance, things like Walking Ballista. Um, and so I have a Walking Ballista, I just don't have it on me. Um, it's in one of my decks. And then Muddle the Mixture is two a blue, uh, two blue, counter target, instant or sorcery spell, instant speed, obviously. Uh, and that's Transmute. So for one blue blue, you could discard it and search a library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card, reveal it and put it in your hand. Then shuffle your library, play this only as a sorcery. So, the nice thing about Transmute is that it's an activated ability, you don't cast the card, so Transmute things can't be countered. Um, and Muddle the Mixture, in addition to being a somewhat solid counter spell, also allows you to grab things like Power Artifact, um, or Grim Monolith. Um, and it also can grab other counter spells in the event that you need to do that. So then I have two functionally, almost functionally identical cards. So there's uh, Reshape, which is blue, blue, and X. As an additional cost to cast it, sacrifice an artifact. Search your library for an artifact card with convert converted the mana cost X or less and put it into play, then shuffle your library. Um, so this again is an unconditional artifact tutor, the downside being you have to pay the mana cost of the artifact that you're finding. So, Transmute Artifact is the exact same thing, except there's two major differences. The first major difference is that you don't have to pay the converted mana cost of the artifact that you're uh, fetching. You have to pay the difference between the artifact, uh, the converted mana cost of the artifact you sacrificed and the conver uh, converted mana cost of the artifact that you're fetching. And then also the uh, cost of transmit artifact, uh, of sacrificing an artifact is part of the uh, resolution, it's not part of the casting. So Whereas if someone counters reshape, you still have to sacrifice the artifact. With transmute artifact, you don't have to sacrifice the artifact until it's resolved. Um, and transmute artifact, the other major difference is that trans, uh, reshape is like five dollars or something like that at most, and transmute artifact is like sixty. Um, and I was able to pick this one up at an incredibly cheap price due to the fact that this is pretty much heavily damaged. Um, and then the last artifact tutor is um, fabricate. So it is two in the blue. Uh, search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. So this is the most well-known artifact tutor in blue. Um, it just grabs any artifact you want for three mana, and so it's pretty solid to have. Uh, so then I have Swan Song, which is a nice counter spell for one mana. It uh, counters target enchantment, instant, or sorcery spell. Its controller puts a 2 2 bird creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So, this typically isn't here to counter other counter spells because this deck isn't very much a control deck. The counter spells that the deck does play are mostly in here to counter oppo opposing counter spells and just protect you rather than uh, go offensively with your counter spells and uh, try and counter your opponent's threats. Um, and in competitive commander games, people oftentimes forget that they have the 2-2 bird creature token. They just kind of skim over the combat step. Um, so sometimes that's not even really a downside. But uh, a 2-2 two -two bird isn't incredibly relevant because this deck doesn't attack at all. Um, and taking 2 damage a turn isn't also very relevant. That's a very long uh, and not incredibly quick clock. So then I play a Theorem Sculptor which is one in the blue for 1-2, Artifact Creature, Vidalcan Artificer. Um, and Artifact Spells you cast cost one less to cast. So not only does this make your artifacts cheaper, it also is an Artifact Creature, meaning it can be sacked to Arkham Daxon. Um, 
which is nice. And so the next few cards are all cards that can be sacked to Arkham. So I have Mannequin, which is two colorless for a 1-1 one, one tap, but one colorless to your mana pool. Play this ability only as a mana source, or as a mana source. Um, okay, and Meanie can be used as an instant. So the thing about all these cards usually don't see play in any decks at all, because they're typically regarded as garbage. Um, because, like, who would pay two mana for a creature that taps at a colorless to mana pool? But because Arkham has to sacrifice artifact creatures, you play artifact creatures that ramp you into a turn 3 Arkham, rather than playing artifacts that are usually superior, things like Mindstone. So then, Milken is the exact same card, except it's a 0-1 instead of being a 1-1. One, one. It's, um, and you tap with the top card of your library into your graveyard, add one color to pool. So, Milliken has a major downside of milling one every time you use it, um, but it's only really a major downside if you hit a problematic permanent tab in your graveyard. Um, something like, for instance, uh, either Paradox Engine or Sentinel Flute. Um, that's your main, the deck's main combo. Or something like Rings of Bright Hearth or Power Artifact. Um, then Mirror Retriever is uh, 2 mana for 1-1. One, one. When it dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So, uh, Dark Steel Forge can't be sacrificed to Arkham. But it's 9 mana. Artifacts you control are indestructible. So this just lets you protect against board wipes and stuff and allows uh, opponents uh, removal spells typically outside of things like Path Digs and Sword of Postures uh, are effectively useless because all your artifacts are indestructible. So Junk Diver is 3 mana for a 1-1 one, one, flying. It's a bird. Uh, it's an artifact creature. When it dies, you turn another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's functionally the same card as Mirror Retriever, uh, except it does flying. Um, and is a bird instead of being a mirror. And costs 1 more mana. Um, and then Hedron Crawler is another 2 mana ramp creature that's an artifact. So it's 2 mana for a 0 1 construct artifact creature, tap it 1 colors to mana pool. Ornithopter, I got the weird art Ornithopter because I could. 0 mana for a 0 2 artifact creature with flying. Mirror Sire is 2 mana for a 1 1 artifact creature mirror. When it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1 1 colorless mirror artifact creature token onto the battlefield. So this allows you to get 2 creatures you can sacrifice to Arkham. Then Clock of Omens is part of a, some combos, and it's also just a nice thing to have in the deck for ramping mana. It's 4 mana for an artifact, tap, uh, 2 untapped artifacts you control, untapped target artifact. Then Lightning Greaves is 2 mana for uh, an equipment. Uh, equipped creature is Haste and Shroud, equip cost is 0. Swift of Boots is 2 mana uh, artifact equipment, equipped creature is Hexproof and Haste, and equip cost is 1. So these two artifacts are typically the first target you get when you're tutoring with Arkham, unless you know for sure your opponents aren't going to be playing anything that's going to uh, remove Arkham once he's in play. Um, or you know for a fact you can combo off in one turn without any uh, fear of yeah, Arkham being removed. So typically these are the ones you want to grab first with Arkham because they can protect him. However, that's not always the case. Then, these cards are all in my current Niv deck, um, but I'm going to be switching them into this deck as soon as I get the full deck. So since this divine top is one colorless for an artifact, one look at the top three cards of your library, put them back in any order. A tap, draw a card, and then put Sensei's Divining Top on top of its owner's library. So this lets you filter the top of your deck and make sure that you draw all the cards you want to draw and none of the cards you don't want to draw. Um, then Factor Fiction is oof. Factor Fiction is three in blue for an instant. View the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles, put one pile in your hand and the other in the graveyard. So this allows you to dig a little bit through your deck to find the notable cards that you want to find, and it also has the added bonus of being able to find multiple cards rather than just finding one card, unless of course they separate into a four and one pile and you need the one card. Ancient Tomb is a land, tap add two colors to mana pool, Ancient Tomb is till damage to you. So this is again a ramp land that allows you to make extra mana faster than you should be able to make. Not much mana. Brainstorm is one blue, instant draw three cards, then take two cards from your hand and put them on top of your library in any order. Again, it's just a uh, nice card draw spell, one of the best in the format, um, and sometimes can be used uh, in response to like hand attack or something like a mind twist, uh, so you can put back the cards you don't want to discard. Mana Vault is one colorless mana for an artifact, it doesn't untap during your untap phase, if it's uh, tapped during your upkeep it deals one damage to you, pay four, untap Mana Vault, play, use this ability only during your upkeep, tap, add three colors to your mana pool, uh, three colors mana to your mana pool, play, um, yeah, interrupt the thing. So this is again a solid one mana mana ramp that uh, in combination with things like Voltaic Key can get uh, pretty strong. Strip Mine is a land, tap on one colors mana to your mana pool, tap, sacrifice Strip Mine, destroy target land. So again, this is land hit against things like Dark Depths, um, 
and is uh, just nice to have. So ponder is one blue for sorcery. You can top your card to your library, then put them back in any order. Uh, you may shuffle your library, draw a card. So this lets you filter your top deck, and sometimes shuffle your library if the cards on top of your deck are cards you don't want to see. So then the next four cards are all counter spells. There's counter spell, which is blue blue instant counter target spell. There's uh, negate, which is one in a blue counter target non creature spell. There's dissipate, which is one blue blue counter target spell. If a spell is countered this way, exile instead of putting it into its own graveyard. And then disallow, which is one blue blue counter target spell activated ability or triggered ability. So anyway, that's all of my Arkham decks and deck that I have so far. Um, I will be posting a deck list in the description to my current version of the deck. And feel free to go leave some comments on uh, the deck if you have any suggestions. So, uh, I'll do a deck deck video as soon as I can finish this deck. Hopefully, I will be able to finish it because some of the pieces are expensive. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching.